Is there a world out there where the Scherzers, the Verlanders of the world, and I've been very anti-trading Verlander, and we can get deeper into that. Obviously, Pete Alonso is not going anywhere, but is there a name out there that gets moved and you kind of perk up because it's that's a big name with a big contract and there are big expectations beyond this year for that player with the Mets? It would be Verlander, even though like I guess that in a way wouldn't be a surprise because it's been talked about so much over the last couple of weeks. But for me, it would be Verlander because he is under legitimate control next year. Because when you think about Max Scherzer, and I, I got some clarity on this, a lot of people are like, oh, if the Mets want to trade Max Scherzer, they just eat his money this year and they eat some percentage of the money next year and, and you get something for him. Well, Max Scherzer doesn't have guaranteed money for next year. So the Mets are actually not allowed to eat theoretical money because Max could technically decline his player right. option. I, I guess the only way the Mets could potentially eat money next year is if they did like um, – they redid his contract and made it into a guaranteed year, then traded it to a team and then ate the money. But as the contract is currently constructed, the Mets are only allowed to eat guaranteed money and buyout money. So they could eat the buyout of an option, um, but they can't eat theoretical money. So I think that makes Max Scherzer like that's an extra layer of complication. If you want to trade him, it's not performing well. It's not guaranteed money for next year, so you can't pick that up. And that means how many teams want a $43 million Max Scherzer. Whereas on Verlander's side, if you really wanted to, you could eat his money this year and eat a chunk of next year because next year is guaranteed money for Verlander. I'm with you. I would not trade Verlander. I st like Even though his numbers aren't fantastic, I still feel like every time he goes out, this is going to be the start where Justin Verlander does what Justin Verlander does. I still feel good about him. In order for me to eat, because when you think about it, a lot of fans are just like, eat the money. Who cares? Right. Um, like he's owed $14 million or so the rest of this season and then 43 next year. So if you're, quote unquote, buying prospects, like what, how, what kind of prospect are you going to get if you do 14 this year? And then even if you did like half of next year, you did $20 million or you did something like that. You're buying like a $35 million prospect and paying some for Verlander to go somewhere else and having to replace him in the rotation. So like a couple of weeks ago, I said, it's probably not that hard to move one of them. The more time is going on, the more I've learned and the more that I kind of like go crazy in my head thinking about this kind of stuff, it seems improbable that they would get the perfect combination of really good return while also not eating too much of the money where it's not worth what you're giving up because it's good to eat money for prospects, but, but you also don't want to pay $30 million for, you know, a couple B level prospects. Like you're going to need something very legitimate. And is there a team out there that's willing to give that up for 41 year old Justin Verlander? 